Hey darlings. Shaking and jumping on the outskirts of the village rode together with a broken groin. Masha persuaded herself that she had broken off from her place and hurried to her dacha, not because of the poisonous words of Marina's neighbor. Yes, she urgently needed jeans, which she was carrying in her grandmother's closet. A very sad reason for her. She simply could not squeeze into them. So she threw them away. And today, what a joy. She gained weight, and kilos was impossible. And when did she lose weight? She just recently started dieting. Well, old jeans will do. Don't buy new ones. She had to save money with her husband. How else? You can't really get a job at the kindergarten, and your husband is temporarily unemployed. What can you do? Everyone lives like that. They are getting over it somehow. Valeric is still doing well. He walks every day, looks for work, and this morning he went. And at lunchtime, she, happy, ran into a neighbor in the Marinka Dacha. She, loaded with bags and bags, hurried to the bus stop. However, the desire to brush her tongue forced her to stop and call Masha. Hello, neighbor. Are you going to the Dacha too? Yes, why not? Probably Masha on her shoulders. On that week there was a window wash. Now I will hardly get ready until the weekend. It's strange, Marina said. You seem to have let your friend live in the country house. Yes, Sveka is there with her son now. Her husband is drunk and Lyosha, son, is always ill. And to rest from her husband even a little bit. And what about me? Let them live. It's not a pity. And the house is looked after. The stove will be flooded at once. Masha was already going to leave. But Marina was asking her questions. She means there. You are here? There she is, like. And what kind of need did you send your Valerka? I saw him in the morning when I was going to the city. I went to your house. Marina, did you recognize yourself? Masha said. He has no business in the country. He is looking for a job. Well, well, said Marina and. Marina didn't give up. I warned you. It's your business now. No matter how late it is. You, Marina. Drive yourself, Marina said. I'll take care of my family myself. Well, take care. Take care. You don't want to listen to the split advice. Marina grabbed her bags and climbed, pushing and mumbling with other passengers into the bus that was coming. The mood was ruined, and Masha scolded herself for it. She found someone to believe in. Marinka, a famous whore, has a tongue without bones. Her husband left her so she gets angry at the whole white light. And yet Masha increased her pace, hurrying home to cook lunch for her husband. It's strange. There was no house like that. Having put a pot of soup on the stove, Masha sat on the couch. Her gaze fell on the floor weights in the corner. She hadn't woken up for a long time to not get upset. She was running and fussing, eating like a bird, and the arrow pointed at the same. Masha with her foot grabbed the scales and got up on them, not deciding to look at the number. Then, breathing, she lowered her gaze down. At first, she didn't even believe it. No, exactly, minus kilos. It didn't seem that the pants in the belt were more comfortable. They are rubber for convenience. You won't understand right away. What a joy. Then she remembered about her favorite jeans she had sent to the country house decided to go there quickly. At the same time, Sveta and Lyosha are visiting. Dinner is ready. Valeric can warm up without it. Leaving a note on the table, the cheerful Masha quickly gathered and buying sweets for tea and chocolate for Lyosha, went on the way. The house, taken from grandmother and adapted for delivery, was on the edge, away from the rest. The forest began immediately behind him and as much as Masha remembered herself, she and grandmother constantly walked behind the mushrooms, then behind the berries. The times were glorious. The familiar path of the loop led to the, yes, everything is not in hand, spinning like a squirrel in a wheel, trying to earn a penny, only constantly, then there is not enough money, then time. The doorbell rang, letting the hostess into the plot. Next to the house, 
The sad Leshka was sitting on the old swing. Seeing Masha, he happily jumped off the table, lying on the ropes, and threw himself to Masha. Hello, Aunt Masha. Did you bring sweets? Hello, Leshka. I brought it, but not sweets. And sweets. Laughing, Masha took out the chocolate and put it in her stretched frozen palm. Here, this is for you. Just wash your hands. Let's go home. No. Lyosha wrapped his head, quickly unfolding the chocolate and sending it to her mouth. Mom said to walk until she called. Masha's heart became restless. Lyosha, you still swing a little, and then we'll go drink tea. With sweets. Masha winked at the boy. Oleg happily nodded and returned to the swing. And Masha, calling herself a fool, walked around the house and looked out the window from the side where they had arranged the bedroom. The picture she saw made her die. She undoubtedly recognized Valerie on the bed of her husband, and next to him lay out all her charms. Sveta. So, what kind of interview did your husband go to? Masha herself did not understand what kind of demon had settled in her. She knocked on the window with a tongue-tied voice, screaming, What are you doing here? Svetka, seeing Masha, silently opened and closed her mouth, trying to hide behind Valera. And the husband himself looked down, afraid to look at his angry wife. The child would be ashamed. Masha said almost calmly, turned around and shaved along the path. Back to the stop. Aunt Masha, where are you going? Have some tea. Lyosha shouted after her, but Masha just waved her hand without turning around. The mood has not changed since the recent rise, and there is no trace left. It seemed to her that she was deafened from the corner, tightly packed with a bag. It rang in her ears, her eyes were pinching. She really wanted to cry but she held on. She held on while walking to the stop. She was holding on to the bus, looking closely out the window, and before the inside view was the same ugly, nasty scene. And only when she came home, she fell face down on the couch and cried for an hour. After crying out loud, Masha made herself drink water, looked at the clock. Valera was supposed to be back by now. The last bus had arrived long ago. Apparently, it's embarrassing to show up in front of her. Well, she doesn't know herself, how she would talk to her husband, and how to behave. She couldn't imagine that this could happen in their simple and understandable life. They've lived for so many years. There wasn't much of a shortage, of course, but everything was like with people, except that God didn't give children. So she's not old yet. She'll have time to give birth. Even losing weight was a problem, so that the hormones would be in order. So the female doctor advised. And so it started. And then such a turn. The bloated husband, she did not wait. Fell asleep. He did not appear in the morning. And Masha, upset, looking in the mirror, reddened eyes and swollen from tears, nose, gathered to work. The trouble is a trouble, and you cannot be late. Such a time has come. For work two hands must be held. Each worker behind the back, queue of contenders stands. Everyone is just waiting for the place to be taken by someone else. The day was tense. Masha was busy with her phone, hoping to find messages from Valera. Pride prevented her from calling or writing herself. After missing out on the evening, Masha flew home thinking about what to say to her husband who was out the apartment met her suspicious silence. Moreover, something unreachable about her changed. Looking out the corridor, Masha realized what was wrong. Valera's shoes and jacket disappeared. But there were stone children's shoes on the shoebox. Masha went into the room and saw the door of the wardrobe and a pile of clothes on the floor. After cooling down, she went to the lower shelf. There. In the barrel of the gun, a lock was stored for a black day. Apparently, her husband decided that this day had come because there was no money. Masha frantically went down to the sofa, looking at the mess in their usually neatly cleaned apartment. Suddenly, somewhere nearby, the door creaked, and on the doorstep appeared Lyosha. I was in the toilet, 
she explained, looking at the room. So, the mess was arranged, yes? Yes, it's a mess. Mashinalina said Masha, and immediately grabbed her. Lyosha, where is mom? The baby waved his hands. I do not know. They told me to sit here. He said. Then I wanted to eat very much. I ate soup from the refrigerator. Delicious. He admitted from below to the top, looking at Masha. Does not swear. A note was found in the kitchen, written by a bitter handwriting of Valera. Masha, you now know everything. We have love with Sveta. I want to live with her. And with you I will divorce. Our apartment will remain yours. And the dacha will be mine. I've already found a buyer. We went to Svetkina and Tekka at the sea. We'll start a new life there. Take Lyosha to his father. Goodbye. Valerie. Masha read the note several times and looked at Lyosha confusedly. He came up and held her hand tightly, and this touching gesture helped Masha hold back the boiling tears of resentment. You say you ate soup? That's good. Do you want potatoes with cutlets? I will. Lyosha had fun, and Masha got down to business. After a delicious dinner and tea, her life seemed not so lousy. In addition, she could not afford to make an hysterical face when she was a child. Well, Lioza, will you go home? Trying to make the voice sound cheerful, she asked. The boy, heavy, sighed as he grew up. Aunt Masha, there's a drunk dad lying around. I'm afraid of him, Masha said and did not believe herself. In general, this was an ordinary state for Talik, Lyashkin's father. But it will still be right if the child will spend the night in his own house, and not in the guest house of a former friend, who has already escaped from her almost as a former husband. The wording seemed to her confused, and she waved her hand at all attempts to understand anything in this crazy situation. Put on your jacket, or I might have stolen you. What? Put me in jail? The baby's eyes became round like a kitten's. Lyosha, don't say nonsense. Masha looked at the boy. I didn't do anything wrong, did I? But I still have to go to dad. Okay. The baby smirked and began to poke his hands in his jacket, not getting into his sleeves. Masha helped him, locked him up, pulled him so that the shirt would not stick out, and dressed herself. And they went on a night trip to the city. Masha persuaded herself, don't be so hasty. Maybe it will all get better somehow. And what if Valera decides to come tomorrow with a guilty mind? With Lyosha, we need to solve something immediately. Talik is not a Talik, but a father. According to the law, he must take care of his own child. So first we will arrange a baby, and then we will not let him go. She had to visit Sveta's house. However, each time these visits ended the same. In the midst of a lively women's conversation, a drunk Talik appeared and offered to drink for the three of them. If they refused, he got offended and began to get angry. If they agreed, he quickly got drunk and behaved like a pig. Both options of Masha were equally unpleasant, and gradually she stopped visiting her friend. She sympathized with Lyosha. He was a smart but very sad boy. He also often got cold. So Masha allowed them to use the cottage so that he could breathe fresh forest air. She allowed it on her head. But the boy is definitely not to blame for anything. At first, no one answered the phone. Then there were. He asked, looking at Masha with senseless eyes. Where is Svetka? I'm Masha. You don't recognize me at all. The girl quickly replied and pushed forward the resting Lyosha. Here, your son brought home. I don't understand. Where is Svetka? Toliak screamed, shuddering. His legs were bent, and he fell hard on the floor, shivering and shaking his legs. Apparently he hit himself because blood flowed from his nose. Lyosha screamed and hid behind Masha. She was confused, looking at an unpleasant picture, then grabbed the phone. Ambulance. Come quickly, there is a man here, bad. Surprisingly, but this time the ambulance came really quickly. They managed to drag the drowning Talik into the corridor to at least close the door. 
The gloomy med brother took a shot, then looked at Masha with a smile. Balachka visited him on the way. How long has he been in this state? I don't know. Masha got confused and started to justify herself. You see, I'm not a wife, I'm a friend. And she kept silent, realizing that for the doctor, the picture becomes even less clear. In short, we take him to the RD city. We dig, and there, as it goes, announced the nurse. And how about Lyosha? Masha started and kept silent. It's understandable not to leave the child alone in the apartment. Carefully locking the door after the father of the family was taken out of the apartment, Masha found the strength to smile at the frightened Lyosha. But why are you trembling? Let's go back. You'll stay with me. And will the TV be able to watch? The boy asked in a shrill voice. Of course it can. Masha was a little surprised by the question, but Lyosha immediately explained everything. And then we don't have a dad, and I love watching cartoons. You will have cartoons, said his mother, and even her heart was crumbling. How can it be possible? And what kind of husband and father is after that? And what kind of mother did her son leave for the health of an alcoholic? That's why Svetka found a better option for herself. You're Valeric. And you got Lyosha. In terms of compensation, apparently. Masha herself choked. But the compensation, with a sob and a desperate sigh, now firmly held her hand. And it was necessary to solve the problems that had been caused in the order of order. The first thing to do is to put the boy to sleep. On the way back, they went to the round-the-clock store and Masha barely cried, noticing how greedy the boy looked at the sweet. It seems that he does not often get sweets. Having picked up a whole package of all sorts of delicious things, they finally returned to Masha's orphanage. At the table, Lyosha was swearing at Masha, so Masha sent him to brush his teeth. The boy was confused and confused. I have nothing to do. The brush is at home. I forgot, he explained complainingly looking at the girl. This is not a problem. There is a new brush in the locker room. Unpacked, Masha praised herself for her foresight. In fact, she really liked this brush, so she didn't hold back, bought it on the days. It was useful at the same time. Having laid the boy down, she also lay down, physically feeling the emptiness where Valera usually snored. Lately, they have been sleeping in the same bed more and more often, but now, being left alone, Masha felt very lonely and unhappy. Suddenly she heard the door creak. The boss's legs slipped through the floor, and Lyosha climbed under the blanket under her. All the tremors. What's wrong with you? Masha was worried, tightly hugging the scared baby. Can I sleep here? I'm scared. Lyosha whispered quietly, and Masha, in the light of the nightstand, saw that his face was wet with tears. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. She trusted the baby, and in a minute the calm boy, a little whistling with a snoring nose. Masha became so cozy and warm that she also slowly fell asleep, deciding that everyone at the party could wait until tomorrow, and now she will still sleep. In the morning, barely opening her eyes, Masha remembered all the yesterday's troubles. Her eyes were pinched, but next to her was a snotty Leisha. So carefully getting out of bed, she soon, and went to prepare breakfast. Soon, on the pan under the lid, a magnificent omelet with cheese was already tired. Toaster methodically spat out fried pieces of bread, on which Masha gently smeared jam. For herself, she made coffee. Lyosha poured an orange juice into a glass. Satisfied with the result, she sat down at the table. So, she will take the boy to kindergarten. So, for the day he is dressed up. And then? What then? Hoping that the runaway mama will suddenly grab on and take over the mind. Doesn't have to. Dad is resting in the hospital. And she herself will not have enough conscience to leave the child alone with a drunk man. So. She will live while she has it. It's okay. They will cope. Aunt Masha, how it smells delicious. On the threshold, desperately whining, 
a grumpy Lyosha appeared, but immediately let go of her strict look. Good morning, Lyosha. I'll go to the bathroom, then to the table. The shining Lyosha was running in the direction indicated. While he was splashing there, Masha managed to get a little makeup and comb her hair. Looking at herself in the mirror with contempt, it seems unnoticeable that her husband left her yesterday. The least she would want is for her aunties to be at work, and they were happy behind their backs that something like this happened to them. You won't wait. The washed and even combed Leshka returned. He tried very hard to be good and obedient so that Masha would like it. Omelet with crumbles was thrown away in one sitting. Asked for an addition. Drank juice. Delicious. Licking it. He took out the verdict and immediately suggested. Can I wash the dishes? I can. Really? Masha was surprised and, thinking, suggested. Let's do it together. I wash and you wipe. Come on. Lyosha happily supported and, realizing his failure, added, That is, come on, come on, come on. Masha laughed and stretched out his hand. Lyosha, shining, squeezed it like an adult and, feeling exhausted, said, You're cool. You too. Masha supported and they got down to business. Lyosha wiped the dishes with such an important view as if it was a particularly difficult task. He didn't break anything besides, it turned out to be much more fun to do this for a couple. And now to the kindergarten, Masha commanded. Lyosha quickly got ready and before her was at the door, already dressed with a backpack, seized yesterday from home. Noticing that something was bothering him, Masha asked, Lyosha, why are you laughing? Don't you want to go to kindergarten? I want to go to kindergarten, the boy replied and looked into her eyes. And then where do I go? Home? It turns out what he was thinking all this time, and how he was afraid that in the evening he would have to go home to the one who finished drinking to the devil's dad. Lyosha, with a penetrating voice, said Masha, sitting in front of him on a mat. You helped me so great today with the dishes, and in the evening I will come from work tired. And who will help me? I will help. Lyosha happily assured her. And I can cook too, right? So they agreed. Masha felt like a simple pasta and pistachio in one bottle. That's how cunning she turned. Out. The boy feels like a necessary, useful man in the house, and not a kitten taken from the street out of pity. Everyone was busy at work. They were preparing for another competition, which has recently been pouring peas into all educational institutions. So she slowly sent Lyosha to his group, and she herself got into a total mess. The day flew by unnoticed. Masha managed to redo a bunch of things. She was wearing like, A. I'm in the hospital. He's very bad. Lyosha is with me. And she calmed down, deciding that she did everything she could. To be honest, she didn't want to stay alone that night, that she was glad to be with Lyosha. The boy also didn't hide that he was just happy to go visit Masha again. He talked all the way, shared news, told about friends and complained a little about one boy who, it's okay, he'll grow a little and sort it out with the, and they both, climbing onto the couch, plunged into a fun adventure of a cheeky patrol. Lyosha grumbled and laughed. Ahol. It was warm from him, and Masha realized that so well and calmly, she had not been for a long time. To be honest, she does not remember when it was. So now she was even grateful to the deceitful husband and girlfriend of the traitor who gave her this glorious boy. At this moment, Masha understood very clearly what she lacked in life. Such a reliable little boy, cartoonists, secretly bought Vrednasti, that is, normal family happiness, which is not complete without ringing children's voices, carelessness, and trust. Having slept well, Masha patted her phone a little more. Well, okay. If you don't want it for the good, it will be for the bad. Today's evening went to Masha's advantage. She was completely gathered with thoughts and tuned in to decisive actions. What is it that turns out? Is it possible in our country to select a wife without any punishment, sell the property, give her the inheritance, 
and even give the child to the will of fate? No, it can't be done in your way. We will find a wife for you, gentlemen. Lyosha didn't come to this night. Apparently, the child's psyche quickly adapts to sadness and joy. It's good that tomorrow is already Saturday. We need to go to the dacha and figure out what's going on there. With these thoughts, Masha fell asleep this time tightly, without dreams. As a result, she overslept almost until lunch. It seems that the events of the last few days have fundamentally knocked her out of the way because she had never noticed anything like this before. And on the weekdays and on holidays, she would get up at seven, get herself ready and cook breakfast for herself and Valera, so that later, when he wakes up, he warms up and eats normally, and not eat in a habit. Valeric himself never bothered with cooking, referring to the fact that this is not a man's business. The truth is that what is considered a man's business, he also did not really care. So the tap was repaired by the water supply man, and Masha was doing the shelves herself. It was the third year since the day when her husband had a surgery, and he was in a jobless status. Valera was sitting at home, browsing newspapers with ads, looking for a job. Apparently, so far, the one that fits all the canons, known only to him, was not found. And her husband loved to eat a lot, often, and deliciously. Masha took half of the bet in the kindergarten, worked as a trainee. But the money was still in the bag. Valera's character began to deteriorate. He was grumbling and whining more and more. He lost interest in his wife's duties. And now it turns out that this was exactly about his wife. He was not grumbling behind the scenes. So, enough. Masha broke herself and... There she was expected surprise. Lyosha puking from extreme concentration in four. Convenience puking on a small stool, fried an egg. Turning to her with a shining face, he proudly proclaimed, Good morning. Sit down for breakfast. Masha, laughing, sat down at the table. The egg a little burned. Besides, he forgot to salt it. But in general, breakfast turned out to be edible. Lisha, you are the best man in my life. Masha honestly admitted, having eaten the treat. The boy looked at her seriously and nodded. I'm still a little one, so I'll grow up and take care of you. Masha's eyes were filled with tears. Thank you, Lisha, and I'm talking about you. The boy kept silent, picking an egg. Aunt Masha, mom left me, didn't she? He suddenly asked, raising his big gray eyes at her. I'll get to Svetka and personally sew it myself, Masha promised herself, feeling like anger is boiling inside. What kind of cuckoo should you be to change such a wonderful son into a man? And a man is not like that, to be honest. But she certainly said something completely different. What nonsense. How can you be abandoned? Mom is just tired, confused. She decided to go to the sea to rest and come back. And dad? Is he dead? Suddenly, Lyosha asked. Masha was shocked. And the truth is, she doesn't know anything about Talik, and yesterday he was very bad. Lyosha, you're a big boy. You have to think for yourself. If this happened, we would have already been called. So? She said and did not believe her own words. Where would the doctors call if she didn't leave the phone? Let's make a deal. You're on the jam on the cookies for Masha, we'll have sweet sandwiches for tea, and I'll call and find out everything. Masha found the phone of the RD city and called, hastily explaining the situation to the ungrateful administrator. Girl, why did you let your husband do that? She counted her in response. It's good that you made it, otherwise the widow would already be. I'm not a wife, I'm a friend. Again, Masha tried to explain something. She said, we know such people, but my aunt still didn't answer. A couple more days and she'll be fine. He has strong intoxication, barely got out of bed. You can take your treasure on Monday. You know her. I still didn't have enough of this. Masha barely answered, but instead she thanked the woman. Everything is fine with dad. He will recover and come home. With joy, she declared to Lyosha. However, the boy did not look happy. On the contrary, 
He was sad and put down a snack. You will give it to him? Yes, he quietly asked. Masha introduced Lyosha to an inadequate father in one apartment, and she was not in her right mind. Lyosha, the weekend is ahead, she found. Let's go to the dacha, right now. Let's walk in the forest, breathe the air, and then we'll figure it out. Come on. Lyosha happily sat down and rushed to get ready. Before, Masha always loved to be in the country house. She remembered that happy time when it was not a country house, but the house of Grandma Vasilisa, her beloved grandmother, who she spent the holidays and weekends with. Parents usually did not have time for her, both taught and gave much more time to other children and not to their own only daughter. But Grandma had enough time for her, and time and heart, and patience, so that with any opportunity, Masha ran away from a bustling city into this fabulous forest and garden kingdom, which was ruled by her personal Vasilisa the wise and the beautiful in one bottle. And the grandmother was really good. Stout, gray braid, wreath laid around the head. Even in old age, she did not change her luxurious braid for a convenient short haircut. Masha loved combing her grandmother's silver hair and comb, saying, what a beautiful you are. Grandma smiled with a clear sun, and with so much quiet joy there was always in them. Through the sun-stained house with caged curtains, samovar, long conversations over tea, fairy tales and amazing stories. The fairy tale ended with her grandmother. She left quietly. She just fell asleep in the evening and didn't wake up. Only later it turned out that she had been sick for a long time but no one ever heard complaints from her. Without a grandmother, the house was deserted, as if it had become less grown. They were attracted by science. Barely waiting for Masha to finish her undergraduate, she will start working in a kindergarten, and then will marry the first to be turned over to her by Valeric. They waved their daughter's hand and flew off to the ocean in America to continue studying science. They didn't call Masha with them. Yes, she wouldn't go. Why would she need a stranger? Even the country is frightening. Could it be that there is her little house, drowning in the bushes of sirens, with old creaking swingers or funny babies with whom she liked to drive at work? At that time, Masha dreamed that very soon. And in their house with Valera will appear such a shell, will trample with thick legs, to crawl on his knees, call her mom. And what now? No husband. No baby. Now also the house in which the happiest days of her life have passed, the same Valera wants to sell. She was threatened to sign a house for this traitor. He asked so that the house on him was recorded and the apartment on her. As if he was preparing a special escape plan. It's not possible. Enough hiding your head in the sand. She will fight. Not for the dacha, but for the memory of happiness about grandma about fairy tales. Masha walked down the path, holding Lyosha's hand, and was surprised by herself. Where did that Masha Rasmusnya go? Soft, understanding, forgiving, used to always and in everything to be guilty. Now she was ready to fight injustice and not only defend, but also attack if necessary. Near the house, Masha stopped like a digger. The reason for this was a motorcycle parked near the fence. In technology, she did not understand, but the motorcycle, it seems, was heavily wound up. She saw such in the movies about bikers. Where did he get it from? Wow. Lyosha also noticed the miracle of technology and gazed at him with all his eyes, opening his mouth with admiration. Lyosha, stay here. Don't enter the house. If anything, run to the neighbor's house to Aunt Marina. Masha ordered looking around. I don't want to go to this aunt. She is harmful. The boy wriggled. Lyosha, don't argue. Masha strictly said, noticing a hammer on the bench. But Valerka, a good master, threw everything and made his legs. Okay, it's not his time yet. Let's see who is visiting us. Masha peeked out the window and looked inside. At first glance, there was no one in the house. Maybe someone came to the neighbors, 
and for some reason put the motorcycle in the neighboring yard? Yes, well, what nonsense. Masha carefully bent over the wall and, nose to nose, ran into a tall man in one of his panties and a bucket raised above his head. The man, who had not expected her appearance, stooped and rolled over with ice water not only himself, but also her in the, I didn't get a tooth on a tooth, and then there are still such insults. Come on, let go of Lyosha and get out of here before I call the police. I'll call her myself now. The man got angry, holding the boy at a safe distance with one hand. Lyosha hissed and rushed into battle. What impudence. Finally, Masha came out of her. Get out of here. This is my dacha. Figs. This is my dacha. The man was not in debt. I have already given the date and the documents to the owner of the plot to the off genetic Valerie Sergeyevich, were registered on the days, and you, sorry, don't look like him at all, because I am the off genetic Maria Dmitrievna, the wife of the above mentioned goat, said Masha. The man looked at her with contempt. That is, you are the very unworthy wife for the operation that Valery Sergeyevich urgently needed money? It seems I understand how right he was. You, lady, are clearly not in yourself. I'm not a lady to you, said Masha. Weird, but at first glance it looks like. Although she's a wet cat, still more. Look at yourself. Masha did not give up. The man looked at the whole company again and moved Lyosha to Masha. She hugged him, pressed him to her and, calling, glared so you're sure that you're the owner, and that the dacha was not sold without your consent. So? Finally, he asked, making some conclusions. Masha nodded. In the documents confirming your identity and rights to property can you provide? The man asked thoughtfully. Masha angrily nodded. In a bag thrown in a rush on the bench, she had a passport. So what, what, what? She really is the one who gives herself out. She will prove it once. And your husband? Excuse me, where? Masha continued to ask the stranger. I ran away with your money, said Masha in revenge. Yes, the situation. The man sighed and suddenly suggested. You should change into dry clothes, and so do I. If you don't plan to beat me with a hammer right now, then I suggest you end the truce and go home. Masha thought, looked at the stranger, not pressing against her, at the one who continued to build cruel faces to Lyosha. I turned to the boy. Lyosha, you stay here for now. If anything, I will scream, and you fly to Aunt Marina for help. Lyosha nodded and, looking at the stranger, showed him a fist. He in response muttered something about apples and apples, but Masha started pretending that she did not hear. When she was in the house, she ran to the closet, immediately. Old t-shirt, and something from the underwear. Having grabbed all this good in the mouth, she silently, with a proudly raised head, walked into the bedroom, with disapproval, looking their evidence of occupation of the territory by an impudent type. A laptop was found on the bed. Jeans were hanging on the back of the chair. Books were lying on the bedside table. The jeans were sitting perfectly, and this somewhat reconciled their owner with the current situation. And she happily turned in front of the mirror. There was a cough behind. Miss, can I also, that, dress in a dry way? Or are you going to watch the process? Masha, shivering from indignation, walked past him in the kitchen. There were no special changes, only an electric kettle appeared on the table a mug with a picture of dogs, and a box of sweets and a pack of brews. Not long after, Masha took a couple more cups, a sugar bowl, and brewed some tea. Nothing will be of him. And the candies are delicious, dear. She tried them only once. Let Lyosha eat. By the way, where is he? Masha looked out the window and froze. The smart boy, left without a look, turned around near the motorcycle. Apparently, he somehow hit the foot, because the miracle of technology was. And now she was threatened to press the baby. Lyosha, Masha yelled out in her own voice, throwing herself to the door. The man was the first to make it. 
Siganov straight out of the window. He jumped a few jumps to the boy and pulled him out of under the motorcycle. Masha, running out of the porch, pulled Lyosha out and turned to the stranger, burning him with an angry look. He waved his hands. But I didn't know there were children here. You didn't have to appear here at all, Masha whispered, stroking Lyosha on the back. You are the only ones in trouble. You were very scared, baby. This already belonged to the boy. I was not scared of anything. Suddenly the one got angry. You think, I would jump off and that's it. Did you see what a cool motorbike? I would like to ride. Both were angry. Suddenly Masha became funny. She saw everything happening from the side and laughed. Together with her, Lyosha giggled. The stranger looked at them with complete confusion, twisted his finger and then, without holding back, also laughed. Well, let's assume that the acquaintance took place. He stretched out his hand to Masha. Sergei Arkadyevich, you can just Sergei. Well, peace, peace. Masha thought, perhaps, with her stretched out palm. And my name is Lyosha. The boy clapped his palm on their hands. And I want to eat. After looking over, Masha and Sergei laughed. The ice of hostility melted before their eyes. I can offer you sandwiches and tea, announced the involuntary invader of the Dacha territories. With candies? Masha, who had shrugged, clarified. Of course, Sergei was surprised. What kind of tea without sweets? Lyosha carefully looked at both of them, something to estimate. It was noticeable that the boy decided to take advantage of the situation to the maximum. So, will you ride me on a motorcycle? He finally said, I suffered, right? That's what he says, said Sergei. The boy is growing up, but he is right. He can count on compensation fully, only if his mother allows. Aunt Masha is not a mother. She is my friend. Right. Storovskaya? And Lyosha was delighted to see a slightly reddened Masha. True. He did not argue with Sergei. Also brave, like you, with a hammer. And he laughed again. Masha was a little awkward. Yes, she was good at that moment. There is nothing to say. So I thought you were a dacha thief, she nod. Sergei made surprised eyes. And what really looks like. And then no, Masha did not give up. You walk here without a t-shirt, motorcycle again. Yes, what's wrong with him? Sergei went on the offensive. Normal Yamaha, a dream of all life one can say. Normal people drive cars. Masha didn't give up, who had only a bicycle for all her life, which, by the way, had been standing somewhere in the shed for many years. An interesting approach, Sergei nodded. Apparently I'm not normal. Just don't post this fact, please, otherwise I'll be kicked out of the department. Suddenly Masha became very interested. What department are you in? She clarified. From the Department of Psychology of the State University. I teach there for a second. I would never have thought. Masha quietly spoke, looking into the eyes of the interlocutor. In her presentation, the professors looked a little different. They were wearing strict costumes that covered a solid belly, beard, and moved exclusively by cars. And then jeans, a motorcycle, and in general, all some kind of not serious. He spits water. How? Even so, Sergei was in a hurry. And you, excuse me, who do you work for? And I, you know, I raise children. In the kindergarten. She went to Masha's attack to show off, putting Lyosha in front of her. He nodded, confirming this fact. You are training in unison. Self-defense with the use of weapons of labor? Sergei smiled. Masha wanted to be offended. But then she remembered how she was crawling along the wall with a hammer and suddenly laughed again. Well, since we are colleagues in some kind, sculptors of human souls should agree, said Sergei. And will there be tea with sweets? The unhappy subject was given a voice by Lyosha. You have a hungry child, by the way, colleague, but this is a failure. The price of a penny is like a teacher, said Sergei. Tell me, wise child. Can I smooth out my drunken mistake? 
Lyosha figured something out and nodded. I told you already. Will you ride a motorbike? Yes. No way. Two answers sounded at the same time. Why not? Sergei asked, turning to Masha. Because it's dangerous. Cut off the gold. And if the three of us? Minked Sergei. You also want to ride. I see. Masha pretended not to notice the transition to you. Moreover, he guessed. First, feed the child. Having decided to leave behind the last word, she said, and then we'll see. It's harsh, said Sergei, looking for support from Lyosha. It's still good. Let's go have tea. The one, somewhat confused, grabbed his palm and led the boy home, and then decidedly stepped in. T justified their expectations, especially considering the candies attached to it and sandwiches with raw smoked sausage. Lyosha quickly swept three sandwiches, stuffed them with candies on both cheeks, and looked happy to the extreme. Oh, now cartoons, the adult said in a dreamy tone. Looked over. No problem, shook Sergei's shoulders. The internet is there. Now we will find something interesting. Soon. The one who reached the peak of happiness, Lyosha, was already lying on the bed with a note. Well, let's discuss the situation on a cold head, suggested Sergei. Masha agreed that yes, indeed, it is worth talking. They went out into the yard and sat down at the bench at the house, pressing their backs to the warm boards. I didn't understand everything, said Sergei. Masha sighed, gathering her thoughts. It was unpleasant to recall what had happened, but it was necessary. After retelling the story of the sudden visit to the dacha and the lovers who were working here, she glanced at Sergei, whether he would be angry about this. However, the man's face was red as a lack of understanding, mixed with sympathy. But this is understandable. He summed up. You can at any time dispute the fact of sale, because you are married. And without your consent, you can't sell. Moreover, so far, it was just about the date. I have not listed the whole amount yet. And in general, it is good to go to the police, say. The money was stolen by the man, but you most likely will not give it anywhere, right? I will not, agreed Masha. At first I wanted, and then I thought that they would say there, it's a family matter. You figure it out yourself. Most likely, yes, Sergei did not argue. But you can't leave it like that. What should I do? Masha quietly asked. Masha, can you honestly answer one question? I have a professional interest. Suddenly, Sergei asked, looking at her face carefully. The girl inside did not strain, but nodded. Tell me, why do you live with him? What unites you in the family? I understand that you have no children. Masha was saddened and Sergei, Realizing that he accidentally got into a hospital, I grabbed him, wanted to take him away, but left him. That is, what do I want to say? In my opinion, a man must have support, a defender, an importer. Valera, is he like that? Masha shook her head. He is looking for a job. For some reason, she became the protection of her runaway husband. Sergei bowed as if he had bitten off a lemon. I would have already found it. So what do we have? Lives on the ready. Now he's turned left. He's taken you over. And this is a family. Masha knew he was right. But she was so offended that she decided to stab the interlocutor. It's easy for you to think. I also have a professor of sour cheeses. He drives on a cool bike. His wife is at home. Sitting. Not working. Sergei smiled. He really enjoyed watching the extremely angry Masha, who jumped on him like a wild sparrow on a cat. What's the point of being so sour? I'm actually just into the psychology of family relationships, and I don't have a wife. It didn't work out somehow. Here, Masha pointed her finger up. You get married yourself, and you teach others. It's because I haven't met anyone like you. Sergei grumbled. Masha closed her mouth opened and closed again. Sergei looked at her. Fun devils were dancing in his bitter eyes. What kind of? What's so special about me? I'm not pretty. I'm not a model at all. 
Masha herself understood that she was carrying some kind of heresy, but the words were already flying from the tongue. Get up, Sergei suddenly commanded. Masha obediently stood up, not understanding, looking at him. Turn around, he continued to command. Masha turned around. Stupidity, said Sergei. You are what you need. And why do I need a human model? I need a woman, you know, to be my enemy with a hammer. Masha burst into laughter, realizing that they were joking around at the bottom. Her eyes were brightening, and Sergei immediately waved his hands. That's it, that's it. I'm quiet. Let's go for a ride. But it's definitely not dangerous, Masha clarified with all her heart, hoping that he would not refuse. So we are quietly. You can't run in the forest. Besides, I am a very careful driver, Sergei assured her. Call the boy. Lyosha, Masha screamed at the door open. Our name is Katatsa. The boy appeared on the threshold like a devil from a tobacco shop. Let's go. He even jumped out of impatience. Yamaha smoothly rolled down the forest path. Lyosha, squeezed between them, whistled with joy and commented without hiding. Wow. Cool. Great. Right? Masha caught herself thinking that she completely agrees with him. She held Sergei tightly behind her waist hugging Lyosha along the way. And it was surprisingly good for her, calm and fun. Sergei was driving quietly, carefully driving around the huts and roots of trees, crawling out onto the path. At the river, they made stops and sat for a long time on a spread jacket, admiring the clouds floating in the sky and their reflection in the water. Masha was silent, trying to remember every moment of this strange day. So unlike everything that has been in her life before, she felt so young, so alive. Every cell in her body sang from the feeling of unknown joy. They returned to the dacha in the same way, and Masha suddenly understood that she desperately does not want to leave for the city and comes up with a reason to stay here longer. He was tired and his eyes were blinding. Both of them figured out his naive trick. Maybe you'll stay? Suggested Sergei. Enough of a place. Besides, you're the host here, and I'm the victim of circumstances. Well, you won't kick me out at night, will you? Masha pretended to doubt. Okay, I won't kick you out. Finally, she decided. If you help me with dinner, to shave sandwiches? Masha looked down on him. What sandwiches? Potatoes in the basement. All sorts of saltings. Strategic stock. Just need to get it. I'm now. Sergei lifted the boards, hiding the loss in the basement, and hid from the view. Masha clicked the switch, and soon two hands with cans appeared from below. And then Sergei himself with a bucket of potatoes. The dinner was a success. The potato in the brick was crumbly. It was served with salted cucumbers, sauerkraut, and the rest of the sausages. They ate so little that they got a little tipsy, and now they were drinking freshly brewed tea that was poured somewhere very close to the salami. Masha, I really wouldn't leave this place, said Sergei. It works surprisingly well here. I've done more in a couple of days than in a month in the city. What are we going to do? Masha shook her shoulders. Instead, Lyosha answered, What's there to think about? You wanted to get married, and the house will be common, and I will come to visit you. The guy says, Sergei looked carefully at the reddened Masha. She was angry and made Lyosha angry. What are you thinking about? If everything was so easy. Okay, talk. Breathing, the boy got out of the table and reported, I'm watching cartoons. When he hid in the bedroom, Sergei looked at Masha. I understood about the walking mom. What about my father? He drank to the brim. Doctors say they barely pulled him out. Masha sighed. The problems again fell on her. The charm of the fairy tale flew away. She has been drinking for a long time. She felt that Sergei was asking her out of curiosity. So, thinking she replied, once he worked as a car mechanic, so people broke up in turn for him. Then the management changed. Problems began at work. Well, the man drank. He broke down. 
Sveka sawed endlessly, then started to walk. Where do you know? Asked Sergei. Masha kept silent. She herself did not know how to determine Sveka's gait. She suddenly got excited, began to watch over herself. She was more beautiful. But there was never such a thing as throwing Lisha away. You say the boy's father is being released from the hospital on Monday? Sergei thoughtfully said. What do you think to do? Well, I'll go eat and talk. Mesha sighed. She had no clear plan. However, she understood that she had no right to leave the boy with herself, even if she herself really didn't want to let him go. Let's go eat together and talk. Sergei corrected. Dictate the phone. I'll be with Alex. Scared, Masha said. She imagined how Sergei rolls up to the kindergarten on his bike, and then the three of them rush around the city. And I'm on a taxi. Sergei smiled. He looked at her carefully and suggested, go to sleep. Enough of today's worries. Let's come up with something in the morning. And you? Zivnov asked Masha. And I'll work in the kitchen. There is a storage in the household, by the way. Yes, there is. Masha, still so desperate, gawking, looked into the closet. The storage was in place, with an old mattress, a blanket and pillows. Oh, the royal bed. Sergei was delighted. Have a rest. I'll manage myself. Good night, Masha said and went to the bedroom. Sergei's head immediately pushed into the door. I'll just take the laptop. They had a charming picture. The monitor shone by demonstrating the appearance of cartoon heroes, and next to it, having spread out his hands, as he was in his clothes, Lyosha was sleeping. The boy was tired. He overcame the oxygen. Sergei smiled, removing his laptop from his bed. Lyosha did not wake up, even when he was slowly cut and covered with a blanket. Good night. Sergei came out, carefully closing the door. Masha undressed and dived under the blanket. She did not sleep. The long-forgotten desire made her look at the closed door with a strip of light at the bottom. She really wanted something to happen, so that he would call her and then, because then she would never let herself think. And then she fell asleep and dreamed of her grandmother Vasilisa. Don't be afraid, granddaughter, said the grandmother in her dream. I'm not afraid, replied Masha. And then the dream changed, and she was already rushing somewhere, freezing with delight and hiding from the wind behind a reliable strong back. On Sunday, they had breakfast together, rode motorcycles, and then, looking for a can of paint, which was left here. It seems, years ago, the three of them painted the fence, and celebrated this labor feat with sausages fried on a grill. Masha was thinking about what was good and joyful for her, and with all her might try to stretch this day out longer. But time, unfortunately, flows according to its own laws. Sergei took them to the last bus, promising to come tomorrow to go to Talik. Before going to bed, they watched TV for a little longer, and then Lyosha suddenly asked, Aunt Masha, on the next weekend we will go to the summer cottage to see Uncle Serioza. Masha hesitated with an answer. How can I explain to a child that not everything in life is so simple and that it consists of not just holidays? And mom is probably swimming in the sea now, continued Lyosha, and tears fell on his eyes. She completely forgot me, yes? Lyosha, let's go to sleep. Masha decisively interrupted this twisted, completely unnecessary conversation. As in the fairy tale, Remember, the morning is wiser in the evening. Melodically, I picked up the phone, sending a message. Good night. Sweet dreams and see you tomorrow. Masha read and smiled. Good night. She answered, thinking that life seems to be getting better. She fell asleep quickly, so she did not hear how the mobile lived again. I'm already reporting about the message that came from Sveta. In the morning, she reread it several times. Sorry if you can. I'm leaving. She decided not to say anything to Lyosha yet. At lunch, having agreed to be replaced for a couple of hours, she went to Sveta's house. On the way, Sergei said that it would be soon, and the alarm went off a little. Sveta was sitting on the bench, 
a road bag was standing next to her. Seeing Masha, she rushed to her. Like Lyosha, where is he? In the kindergarten, where is he? Masha replied sharply. It was unpleasant to see an ex-girlfriend, and if it weren't for Lyosha, she would never have gotten into this ugly story. Why don't you go home? I'm afraid. Svetka admitted and asked, looking in her eyes. You will never forgive me, will you? And you yourself? Masha held back, but deep inside she really wanted to scrub the You, of course, sorry, but your lyrics are just to be sewn and pointed out a lot. And it's expensive, and the sea is dirty, and there's no suitable job. So you decided to take this happiness yourself? Svetka sighed. No, whether when a normal man does not drink, and I'm a fool. That's right, agreed Masha, and turned around, hearing the familiar sound of the motor. Sergei waved his hand politely, greeted the surprised Svetka and asked, Well, girls, ready for negotiations? Masha nodded. Sveta negatively waved her head. The layout is clear. Sergei thought for a second, then ordered. So, first we go with Masha, Talik's wife, and go up by signal. Leaving Sveta downstairs, they climbed the stairs. Masha slowed down, pressed the bell. For a minute, everything was quiet. Then steps were heard behind the door. Talik opened the door, looked around and nodded his head inviting him to come in. Lyosha, do you have? He asked in a deaf voice, without raising his eyes. I'm in the kindergarten now, replied Masha, looking around the apartment. There was no bottle on the table. Moreover, Talik clearly managed to clean up. At least, she did not notice such a drunken mess as last time. He was very scared, continued Talik. Well then, very. He didn't hide it from Masha. The man sighed. It seems he just noticed Sergei and, surprisingly, he stood up to Masha. This is Sergei, my friend. She introduced herself. It's fast for you. Tolik bowed. Masha burst into laughter. But Sergei made a warning gesture and stepped forward. Listen, Anatoly. Maybe, before you judge others, you should sort it out in your own life. Talik stood up to him with interest. On his face, an unusual thought of work appeared. What to do about it? My life is over. No work, no wife. My son is afraid of me. My son needs a father, Masha firmly said. And with work, it is necessary to decide, if not to drink, of course. That's all. Tolia sighed heavily. I think I've been to that world. How cut off. I can't even look at what I'm drinking. And right, said Sergei. By the way, about work. You're an auto mechanic, aren't you? But I was. Talik grumbled. In his hazy eyes, an interest was spotted. I have a friend. He has his own business. He seems to be looking for an assistant. But a smart and reliable one. What do you think? Should I try? Listen, man. Three years ago, you were only doubtful at the same time. They would have laughed. Everyone knew that there was no better master than Anatoly Ivanovich. Talik is no longer Anatoly Ivanovich. It's over. Talik is an alcoholic now. So you're stuck. Or your word is not the master. Sergei smiled. Talik with a swing hit the table with a fist so that the cups jumped up and scaredly screamed. Said I don't drink. So I don't drink. Well, that's great. Write a phone. Can you come today? As never before, Sergei continued. Masha, who had just scaredly turned a look from one to another, admired the self-control of Sergei. I can do it, said Talik. Sergei dictated the numbers to him and continued. And I think you'll figure it out yourself, without us. I don't need a wife. The look that had just dawned on Talik again became dull and gloomy. What, Masha? They threw them at each other, right? Maybe they threw me too. And here your Svetka flew back. It was worth writing that you were in the hospital. What are you talking about? It seems that Talik has reached with great difficulty. About your wife sitting down. Come in. Be afraid. 
Talik is more worried about you than about yourself. Toll, maybe you should make up? Talik, not answering, went to the balcony. Looked down. Sveka, what are you cooking? Go home. Yes, don't be afraid. Don't touch. His Zikian voice came from there. When he returned to the room, Masha thought that his eyes were smiling. Guys, you go. We'll figure it out ourselves. Talik thought, stretched out his hand. And this. Thank you. Tolia, you're only stupid, Masha warned. At that moment, the door opened and the roaring white light threw Talik on his neck, covering his face with kisses and barmak. I'm sorry, darling. I'm sorry. I've never done anything wrong. Never. I think we should go. Sergei concluded. They'll sort it out without us here. They went out into the yard. Masha looked out the window of Svetkina's apartment with some danger. Don't worry. Sergei hugged her shoulders. He's a normal man. He'll take care of the matter. Everything will be fine with them. I think she will also have a lesson in the past. Listen, you really have such friends? Masha asked and immediately went crazy, noticing the modest look in Sergei's eyes. Masha, are you really going to doubt my words every time? Who starts a joint life with a lie? What joint? Masha was surprised to feel how often her heart beat. Sergei smiled at the ordinary one. What did Lyosha tell you? What do we need to marry? And Lyosha won't advise you badly. So I'm still married? Masha understood that her arguments were so so. But the events developed very quickly, and the mind seemed to slow down a little, clinging to the comfort zone, gray, boring, but familiar. Sergei's face became very serious. Masha, you've already decided. Please. While I'm still married, the category is absolutely incomprehensible to me. And I'm kind of a specialist in this matter. Sergei, understand? Masha realized that he was right, but she was defending herself from something. Everything happens too quickly. I just don't have time for events. This is somehow wrong. Masha, who knows how it is right? Take care, give flowers, then make an offer. So I already made an offer. It's generally normal to take care of yourself not only before the wedding. I love you. You love me. What time to lose? Sergei was fired. Masha felt her heart beat faster. And you love me? She said, just in case. I love you. You don't know that. Sergei was surprised, smiling. Masha blinked once, then again. It can't be, she said. It happens. Sergei shook his shoulders. Until the evening, he said these words, he sat down his Yamaha and ran away, leaving Masha standing with his mouth open. She came back to work and spent the rest of the day in a completely inadequate state. She was in a state of shock. Her head was spinning somewhere in the clouds, so her colleagues began to look around and whisper behind her back. But Masha didn't care. In the evening, both parents announced that they were going to take Lyosha. The boy, having entered the corridor, first froze and then, with a whistle, rushed to his mother, hugging her around her neck. The table was standing nearby and, guilty of it, stroked him on the back. The barmacat was something affectionate. Masha was jealous for a second, and at the same time she was happy that it seemed that everything could still be fixed here. Aunt Masha, I'll come to visit, okay? And turning around, Lyosha yelled at her. TV, let's watch. I won't leave you. We are friends. Masha laughed and nodded, and the reunited trio went home. Then she started cleaning the house, ironed all the clothes, put on makeup and sat down, putting a mobile next to her. When the phone rang, she grabbed the phone and immediately barely threw it away. The blood relative Jana Vasilyevna, a woman who is ferocious, poisonous and has all the qualities needed for blood relatives, called, Maria, what's going on with you? She began to blame the tone, not even greeting. Hello, Jana Vasilyevna. Masha answered in a smooth tone, usually a desperate, scared call in her in-laws and especially her visits, 
more like a sudden check in the army. What's going on here? Maria, stop answering questions. Her in-laws broke up. You're breaking the family, the society. You're undermining the foundations. Is it me who's breaking up? Masha was amazed. Actually, it was your son who changed me. Then I robbed and ran away from home. I did not take any part in this action. Oh, leave this demagogy. Masha was very well aware of how her mother-in-law was twisted. At your age, it's time to understand that men are impulsive. They need to be led and not allowed to make the situation out of control. So no one takes off your guilt. Besides, you started yourself. You got fat, and here's the result. Masha unexpectedly had fun for herself. She imagined that somewhere now, next to the formidable Zhanna Vasilyevna, Valeric is listening, waiting for his mother to take over everything for him. Indeed, where could he be if Svetka had come back? Not at the ants, but at the sea he remained. Valerka is there with you, so you tell him that I am going to divorce. And if you don't stop calling me and insulting me, then I will report to the police. I'm being followed by very serious people, so you won't see much of it. She said the last phrase with a sinister voice. The phone was silent. Masha gently put her mobile phone on the chair and laughed. She laughed and, with a laugh, all fears and anxieties, doubts and attacks disappeared. She realized that the previous life in which Valeric and his mother-in-law, because no force will force her to return to that swamp of constant self-humiliation. Another, new place comes to the liberated one, in which she herself will decide how to live, and there will also be a friend Lyosha, cartoons, trips to the dacha, and even, it seems, there will be Sergei. He was not joking. He said that he loves. Such things are not joking, and this new. Life. New Masha. She really liked them. Six months later, Natalia's favorite jeans again did not fit in the waist. And the weight bar is threateningly inclined to the right. But it didn't matter. First of all, Lyosha, who had not forgotten to visit her much more often than before, claimed that she liked it too. Thinking, it became round. So she now looks like Anusha from. Sergei's husband agreed with him. And she didn't care about the numbers. The main thing is that the child was born healthy, and then you can do sports and ride a motorcycle. And to Sergei's advice, it is worth listening. He is not a regular person, but a professor, a family.